Hey guys, David here and welcome to another video. As you can see, I'm in front of the CNC again and that can only mean one thing. I finally got no procrastination. Uh, I actually started working on it again uh, after like almost three quarters of a year of not working on it at all. Uh, after I finished my uh, paper on it uh, for school, uh, I had been working on it for a long time so I was kind of over the whole project. So I had to touch it for a long time. But then, uh, just before the semester started at uni, uh, I spent another week, uh, started working on it again. And then, well, uni semester happened and I was way too busy to work on it, so... It took once again a few months uh, till I started working on it again, uh, which was like a week ago. And now, to you it probably looks pretty much the same as it looked last time you saw it. Uh, it's all mostly together. Uh, you probably can't quite tell this wide shot, but uh, there is a couple extra things like there's some drag chains and whatnot. But apart from that, it looks pretty much the same. But underneath the hood, uh, quite a bit of stuff has happened. Uh, you might recall that there were some rather severe mechanical issues with it, uh, mainly the Y axis having so much backlash that. Uh, it's more slop, the backlash, uh, and the x-axis binding up all over the place, uh, not being real fun to use either. These issues are now largely fixed. Uh, there's still a tiny bit of backlash, but uh, no more than to be expected with uh, cheap ball screws. Uh, the whole thing moves very smoothly and very fast. And while I would love to show you a beautiful montage of everything coming together, all the different things that I did, uh, to be honest, I didn't film most of it. Uh, mostly because I was just kind of working on it and then I had like a day that I wanted to get done as most, much as possible. And while well, filming, it just takes a lot longer, so I didn't film a lot of it. Now I thought I had filmed like the whole disassembly and everything, but I couldn't find the footage anymore, so and since it was like quite a few months ago, I don't quite remember either. I misremembered and I didn't film it or I lost footage somehow, uh, at least I just have a couple of pictures. But I'll just talk you through a bit uh, of what I did. Now first of all I had to take the machine apart again. Uh, to get to the issues of the y-axis, uh, the whole x-axis uh, uh, table and everything had to come off. Now originally how I put it on is I kind of had the machine uh, like leaning over so I could get the table past uh, this edge here. Uh, but that was a pain and really stupid, so instead of going through that whole ordeal again multiple times, putting the table on and off, I decided to just cut out a, a little notch out of the side. Now it's not too pretty, but I can fix it up, put a panel there or something. Uh, that makes the removing the table a lot easier, since I can just uh, slide it out to the side. Then with the table removed uh, and everything off, uh, I was able to see the culprit and it was exactly what I expected it to be. Uh, if I find it, I'll put a clip in of when I mounted the ball screw nut holder for the y-axis uh, to the little carriage there. I just kind of used two long bolts with a couple of washers in between and I also just put in some like washers underneath here for the spacer. I tried to film it, I'll uh, insert some b-roll here. Uh, it's really hard to uh, probably see it with the camera, but it's just like uh, seven washers of, uh, with different thicknesses to get it uh, just right, and two long bolts going through into the block. Uh, uh, the screws had uh, even come a bit loose, and the whole thing was flopping about all over the place, like multiple millimeters, which is just unacceptable. So I took out those two small screws, uh, I believe they were like M5 or M6 or something, but the holes were uh, sized for M8, uh, and I took out the whole washer ordeal. And the reason why I originally went with uh, M6 uh, or M5, I can't quite remember, is because the block for the ball screw nuts was already drilled with these holes. But uh, I just opened those up uh, for proper M8 threads, got some nice M8 bolts, uh, and uh, cut out a little block as for the spacer instead of the washers. Uh, this allowed me to clamp the whole thing a lot more tight and put some Loctite in there as well so the screws cannot back out anymore. 
and this made the whole thing so much more rigid. Then the other thing uh, that I kind of neglected uh, to do at all was to properly tighten uh, the locking nuts uh, where the ball screws uh, are attached uh, to the motors as well. And there's a little uh, nut that I can to, that is threaded on that keeps pressure against the bearings. And I kind of just loosely tightened those, but never properly tightened them. So I went ahead and tightened them, uh, not too too hard, uh, since I don't want to clamp the bearings too badly. I mean, they, they are uh, meant for uh, these kinds of uh, back and forth stresses. I'm not quite sure if they're angular contact bearings or about uh, something along those lines. But I tightened it down nicely and snug, and there's a little set screw that you can tighten against your threads so it does not come loose again. And uh, these two improvements together brought my backlash down way, way, way. Now, I can't quite recall, I'm gonna quickly check in the configuration. So the current backlash on the y-axis is uh, 0 0.06 millimeters, which is not ideal, that's uh, for you imperial folks, that's uh, about uh, two and a half thou. It's not great, but considering that I got pretty much the cheapest ball screws possible, and the rest of my setup is probably also not quite ideal, uh, this is quite acceptable and had just have it in the backlash compensation uh, in Mach 4 uh, so the like me measured backlash now with the compensation turned off is essentially zero and on the x-axis uh, I have even less uh, only uh, 0.03 uh, millimeters of backlash that's uh, a bit over a thou uh, so I'm uh, quite happy with that on the x-axis uh, and the z-axis, uh, I guess, is almost the worst now uh, with uh, 0.08 uh, millimeters of backlash. I uh, haven't uh, really uh, done too much work to try and figure out where that comes from, since on the z-axis the backlash doesn't matter too, too much. So with that uh, done, uh, the whole uh, moving around the table was a lot smoother already. But there was still the problem of the x-axis. Um, going at it again after like a long time, uh, I, I kind of looked at it and was like, why did I do this this way? This is stupid. Uh, back then it made perfect sense to me. Uh, the, nut, the nut of the x-axis ball screw was scraping against the inside of the table here. Uh, the nut here is fixed in the middle and the ball screw goes along the whole length and then with the motor turning, uh, that moves back and forth. And there just isn't quite enough clearance since the nut for the ball screw is a lot larger than the nut that there was in there before, although the screw is the same diameter. It's just because a ball screw nut needs more room than just like a simple nut for like uh, an Acme thread. And like, back when I built it first, uh, my logical uh, conclusion was I'll just grind off the bottom of the table and uh, I spent a whole bunch of time grinding away with my really cheap angle grinder that kind of like burnt up three times in the process. And uh, then it was kind of fine in the middle but still binding up at the edges. And then now I looked at it again and like there's like a couple of millimeters of gap underneath the ball screw. Uh, underneath the ball screw nuts uh, to the table. Why did I not just move the whole screw down? And uh, I cannot be 100% sure why I did uh, think of that. Uh, partially, probably because uh, that meant that I had to kind of slightly slot uh, some of the holes of the uh, motor mounting plates so I could mount the motor lower uh, since that wasn't initially designed to be adjustable. But uh, using some techniques that I will not show in this video for everybody's benefits, uh, it totally did not involve me putting an end mill in a handheld drill and slotting that out. No, you did not hear that. And done with that, I was able to lower the ball screw down about two millimeters, which gave me plenty of clearance, uh, so that uh, now fits perfectly. Uh, with that, uh, now there is no more rubbing anywhere. It all sits nicely, and I put a bunch of lubricant on everything, and as you were just able to witness earlier, uh, it moves quite speedy. Now the way I have to configure at the moment, I'm uh, running at a maximum feed rate of 500 millimeters a uh, minute. That's uh, roughly 200 inches per minute. Uh, 
And that is actually quite fast uh, compared that to the like regular Tormark machines that were with this, the stepper motors. There, the maximum feed rate is, I believe, 90 inches a minute or, or about 2000 millimeters per minute. So, uh, almost twice that. And uh, getting close to the clear path driven uh, Tormark machines, which are at 300 inches a minute or roughly like 7000 millimeters a minute. So, I'm really happy with that. Uh, it's as fast as I'll ever need on this table. Uh, the acceleration I was able to bump way up as well. Now I have it set slightly slower with the axis just because I don't need to move that too often and it's uh, quite heavy. Uh, but if I uh, find that a limiting factor, I'm sure I could uh, increase that even more as well. Then one last thing that I want to talk about that I improved was the, just the way that the plexiglass is held in the windows. First, I uh, thought it just didn't need anything, but then the glass was flopping around since it's 3mm plexiglass in a 6mm uh, wide slot. And then I printed these stupid little uh, white tabs that I uh, pushed in the back to kind of keep it, but they kept falling out. They were really ugly and stupid. So uh, what I did was I just uh, 3D printed a little channel uh, model it so it would slide into the T-slot uh, that have the perfect gap for uh, window pane. Now it took quite a while to print all of them and I had to slightly uh, cut off a little bit of the windows since they were sized perfectly and there's like a millimeter that uh, this new uh, guide takes away so I had to just cut a little bit off the side but that wasn't too big of a deal. And now all the windows uh, fit very snugly, they don't rattle them or if I Kind of shake the machine, you don't hear a bunch of windows uh, rattling back and forth anymore, which is a really nice pricing. Now, of course, there are still uh, quite a bit of things to do. I also started uh, mounting uh, some of the limit switches to actually get properly get homing and everything working, especially with the feed rates uh, at this kind of speeds. I really do need uh, the software limits so I don't accidentally run the machine into itself at like 5,000 millimeters a minute. That would not be a good time for any of the components involved. For that, I just need to uh, prolong some stuff. I also installed uh, drag chains, but currently the cables aren't quite long enough to make use of them yet. So I need to prolong all of the cables a bit. Uh, that way I can have it all nicely cable managed. Uh, I should probably also uh, put the laptop charger somewhere else uh, so that uh, can be hooked up uh, away and have some kind of uh, mount here uh, for the, the keyboard to sit properly, um, maybe a jog wheel or something. But that will be something for another video. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that when it comes out. But uh, apart from that, uh, this should get the machine quite a bit closer to actually uh, nicely usable again. If you have any questions, feedback, input, anything, make sure to leave it down in the comments. And uh, if I feel like it's important enough, I will mention it in the next video as well. Uh, with that said, I want to thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you next time.